Hello my friends, welcome back to another week of painting. Um, this week I'm going to try something a little different. Uh, it's still a landscape. I'm going to paint a very famous uh, landmark, an Irish landmark. It is um, the Burren. Um, it's a big kind of a rock formation. Um, it's a very old uh, burial site. Um, I haven't been there, but um, I always wanted to paint it. It's very striking. So I have a lovely picture ready, um, lovely colours. Um, and painting big rocks, that kind of thing. So you might learn something from it. Um, I have, you can see my picture behind me there, this lovely hen that I painted. Uh, it's on my Patreon page if you want to go and check it out, but I thought I'd show you close up. Um, I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks very, very well. Uh, the eye really brings to life, doesn't it? Um, before I painted the eye, I wasn't kind of sure if it was going to work, but it really does come to life. Let me go right in there and I'll show you. Isn't that lovely? So if you're interested in painting something like that, pop over to Patreon, have a look, see what you think. Uh, lots of tutorials over there. And thank you so much for your support. That was for Patreon, by the way. Okay, I have a canvas here. It's actually the wrong way around. I must fix it. Um, 16 by 12. I'm going to stick some colours on my palette and we'll have a bit of fun with this. And lots of colours, lots of lovely colours in this. So if anything, you might learn how to paint rocks um, or do you know, something along that line, a bit of grass, some flowers, that kind of thing. So yeah, something nice and colourful today. Thank you so much and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Here is my canvas. I did a quick sketch. There's the photograph. Okay, it may not be to your taste, but I think there's a lot of colour in it, lots of detail. Um, I'm just very interested in about learning how to paint rocks nicely, you know, get some nice texture on the rocks. Um, this is the burren. Okay, um, now I think this just needs to be a little bit higher up here. So I'm going to just go a little bit higher with that and a little bit right up with that. Okay, just a little. I can see it goes right up there high. I just a very quick sketch of the rocks, that's all. Now, let me tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow pale, cadmium red, magenta, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, burnt umber, lamp black and some burnt cyana. I also have a little cobalt blue just for the sky. A nice warm blue for the sky, a summery blue. So um, let's start, let's just crack on with it so and have a bit of fun, here we go. Some white, nice bright simple blue sky, okay? Let's just keep it nice and simple. Titanium white, cobalt blue, okay? Those two colours, cobalt is a lovely blue because it's nice and warm, okay? It gives you a nice warm blue. I have a little bit of colour on my brush since when I was painting the hen. It's a little bit of a kind of a brown, but it's okay. Let's just take plenty of blue. I did prime my canvas once. I rubbed it on with sandpaper and I gave it a very light coat of my thinners, which is linseed oil and turpentine mixed together. I gave it a very light, very light rub with some tissue and I left it dry in. So it should be nice and smooth to work on. Let's, um, let's go and find out. Lovely. Very nice. Now let's get lots of blue in here. Lots and lots of blue. Plenty of thinners and plenty of white. Let's mix up a nice puddle of blue here for this sky. Okay. Plenty of blue. Now you can probably take a little bit of phthalo blue as well. But it's very rich so do be careful. And perhaps a touch of crimson I think just to warm it slightly. And let's just put that in the cross, all the way across. Let's go, put that in there. I'll give my brush a quick clean because I seem to have a little touch of colour still there from yesterday. Um, you know, it happens when you don't clean your brushes very, very well. But it's fine. It won't be long disappearing. Nice rich blue all the way across. Let's get some more thalo and a little crimson. Okay, I want to make it nice and rich up on top. It's very rich. It's a very deep, deep blue, isn't it? French ultramarine would work as well. Um, that for me is a bit too luminous. I prefer a kind of a nice earthy blue. I think it just gives it a more natural color to your paintings. Um, but French ultramarine is fine as well for this, okay? If you like vibrant colors, then French ultramarine is perfect. Now, what I'm also going to do is, I'm just looking at the colour of that sky. I can see a kind of a cerulean bluey colour. 
a greeny bluey color it's kind of a turquoise at the bottom i'm thinking i'm going to take a little bit of that and just pop it on my palette um if i can find it there it is because i should have probably done this earlier but it's a very bright greeny whitey blue isn't it just at the bottom let's just pop a little bit of that in and see if we can make it a bit nicer okay kind of a greeny blue i think that's nicer isn't it it adds a touch of that kind of natural glow that you get at the bottom of a sky and go down here and pop it in let's go around the rocks very quickly i'm not too fussed about the sky really it's just i just want to make a nice kind of a vibrant bright sky that's all pop that in there and you can see i'm putting on a nice thick layer as well okay don't be too watery with your paint pop on a nice thick layer don't be shy and let's just soften that all up in together then okay you see that's quite nice now isn't it let's pop to the other side take some cerulean and a hint of cobalt i think and let's just mix that quickly and pop over here and put that in here I'm not being too fussy about my rocks and that kind of thing because I cut into my sky with the rocks then later to make a nice sharp edge okay and look even if it's not your type of a scene you could just have fun learning about painting rocks uh, and grass and stuff like that but I want to kind of start trying to paint more landmarks if I can more Irish landmarks because there's just so many there and it's kind of it's tricky on a weekly basis trying to figure out what they paint this week what are people going to like and you know sometimes you do just kind of get bogged down with painting regular landscapes all the time snow scenes sunsets trees that kind of thing i think it's nice to do something with a bit of structure from time to time just to kind of mix it up a little bit i suppose now i'll pop a little bit more white in just at the bottom a little bit more white there because there are so many gorgeous landmarks here in ireland and it's a shame not to paint them really okay i'm happy with that okay let's just leave it at that nice and light so we have a warm blue going down to a cool blue i think that's nice soften it across with your brush and let's get into the land and the rocks um, so i suppose i'll crack on and do the rocks first yes what do you think i'm going to switch brushes i'm going to go to a nice flat brush okay a medium flat brush and soften that and we have so many colors in these rocks it's very going to be very very tricky to figure out just to get these right i'm going to start off with a kind of a br dark brown a warm brown okay i'm going to go with burnt umber and burnt sienna and perhaps a little hint of crimson then i'm going to put into that because this is a very vibrant color it's very translucent i want to thicken it and make it more pasty so let's take some naples yellow and you see that immediately thickens up the paint and makes it a nice pasty kind of a color um, i'm going to take some magenta because i can see kind of a pinky brown in underneath that i don't know if you can see that on the photograph but for it's a lot of pinks going on inside here it's very pinky brown isn't it so i start off with this look let's just put this in here in underneath i know a lot of kind of beginners when they think about rocks they just think gray do you know uh, but there are so many colors in rocks there's so many so so many you wouldn't believe it um so just kind of play around with your colors try and have a bit of fun with it now i think that will do for now okay now into this i'm going to start mixing some little colors lots of little colors i'm going to take some burnt umber with some magenta let's get some more tumble with magenta so keeping it pinky and i want to start darkening that okay i'm not worried about the back end because it's very black back here okay there's a lot of gray but i just want to start softening some darker color into that sort of around the edges 
So just look at the picture. Let's take a bit of black, some magenta. You can see back here, I'm going to go very kind of a pinky blacky color. Okay. And I'm just simply softening this in. To that stone back there. Okay. There we go. And go to about there. Lots of black up around the front here. You can see that very dark color. So the beauty about oils then is, you see, you can soften colors through. If this was acrylics, it would be very kind of very difficult to make it nice and soft because with acrylics, they dry so, so quickly. It's very difficult to get nice, soft techniques. It can be done uh, with practice, but it's in general, it's just a lot of pressure. You know what I mean? So with eyes like this, you can sort of just fiddle it all together. You see, just kind of merge it all together with your brush. Allow the colors to just soften in. And we have another nice one then kind of coming in like that. Okay, already it's starting to take a bit of shape, isn't it? Um, I'm going to make this slightly higher up here. Bring it down. And I'm going to bring some of that colour, some black and some magenta, down under here. And just soften it across. See, I'm really just kind of dabbing with my brush, just to create that kind of shade in underneath there. That's all I'm doing, just dabbing. Dab, 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 dab. And allow it to just kind of mingle amongst the brown, you see? And this is just giving us a nice texture. Now I'm going to go over here, pop some of that in there. Already we have a nice composition coming together, don't we? I'm going to take some black, put some nice rich dark black in at the back over here. It's full of shadow, isn't it? And a little bit along the edge here, and perhaps a touch of it up around here. You can see there's lots of black. And it, I suppose it's really about just trying to form the crevices and the cracks in the stone. You see the way there's lots of little cracks in there. So with the edge of the brush kind of just flicking it down. Okay. All right. That's not bad. We're kind of getting there, aren't we? I'm going to come down and start doing these here. And it's a lovely warm, warm grey in there. So I'm going to take some black, some magenta, some Naples yellow. Perhaps a hint of crimson. I'll take a little white, just to soften. You can see now I have a kind of a purpley colour here, don't I? But then I'm going to just kind of warm it slightly with a little touch of burnt sienna. Let's take more white. It's a kind of a very warm grey in there, isn't it? Sort of a warm pinky grey. So let's just go and fill in our colours. And when I'm doing this now, you see, I I do this with everything I paint, with rocks and everything. I fill in sort of the middle colour, whatever I think is the middle colour. And then I put in my lights and darks into that. So I'll soften in my lights and darks then into that, you see. So if you think, if you look at a rock or if you look at a building or a wall or something and you see kind of a lot of pink there, a lot of browny pink or a lot of dark greys, start with that colour and you can work in other colours then into that, okay? Um, I find that's kind of the easiest way around it. I'm going to go up a little bit higher with that. Okay, just like that. Um, and now I'm going to start adding little colours to this. I can see there's a little bit of burnt umber, maybe a hint of black in there. I'll take 
actually a hint of black with crimson so I have a very pinky dark pinky black and I'm kind of just dabbing some of that in here you can see there's a bit of shade inside there and just let it kind of dance around you can do this now with most rocks okay with every rock you could just use this technique it's the very very same it's just about creating that texture inside there take some more black and burnt umber and let's get nice and dark down here towards the bottom so you can see I'm just kind of darkening it in letting it sort of dance around and even flick up here and there and you know it's just an impression really at the end of the day that's all it is a nice little impression okay now I want to kind of warm it ever so slightly so I'm going to take some crimson and a little of this burnt umber here kind of a warm pink I'm just going to pop a little bit of that warm pink through it here and there there's probably even a hint of burnt sienna in there as well because that glow from the top I want to kind of translate that down through the rock as well and even some on this one here I'm just kind of dabbing it around you see and I worry about my finer details then with a pointy brush in a moment but I just want to kind of get the broad colours in with this you see I'm going with a nice pinky grey again nice dark grey I just want to darken the edge of that rock there okay just let that disappear out and go again with some burnt umber and black and we'll go a nice dark down at the bottom here and we'll go nice and dark up around the top as well there's a nice dark spot up there we can see there's a nice kind of, kind of a shade coming down I might mix some purples as well into this um, in just a moment and then I'm going to add a little touch of light you can see that bit of light we have in there I'm going to use Naples yellow a little magenta and perhaps a hint of white I think it would be nice now just to see all this kind of coming together won't it just to see how it turns out it's going to be nice very exciting to see it kind of come to life I'm going to just gently dab my brush just like this look it's creating a little bit of texture in there so that then separates the front from the back all right there we go I can pop a little bit of that on around here and there as well on top creating that nice sort of sunlit piece that we have up there take a bit more Naples yellow in that and bring it around and up along the top like that okay now starting to come together slowly I'm going to get a smaller brush and do the front of this okay slightly smaller flat brush very bright sunny colour out there Naples yellow alizarin crimson I'd say I think even just those two colours would do and pop in the light side of your wall okay or your stone sorry the light side of your stone pop that in there and I'll do the same with this side over here very thin 
stone on this side and I'm going to use the same technique just to put some bright spots up on this hair okay I will then use a palette knife later for this just to get some nice, nice kind of rough rocky edges up there as well um, a little bit more crimson perhaps a bit of yellow I'll go with cadmium yellow as well pop a little warm cadmium yellow around that and even around that as well I'm just kind of going along now filling in all of this I'm not um, too particular about details just sort of getting the broad colours in a little bit of dark colour through this stone at the front here just to give the impression of little cracks crevices that kind of thing I'll take some black and a bit of brown I'm going to go along this wall here I'm going to pop some purples in as well in just a moment but let me just um, go under here and increase the glow so I'm going to start off with something dark go a bit black some burnt umber and a little burnt sienna and I just want to deepen some of those in fact I'm going to take some crimson as well I want to darken some of these with that brush you see just like that and we have a nice dark one in under there and nice little one along here then up on top we have a really nice one like that I'm using just black now on its own okay And it's really just about looking at where all those little dark spots are you see it's just kind of look around you spot the dark sections just pop a little bit of dark color in and sort of just move it around okay and I'll take a little bit of black in under here maybe a hint of cadmium red actually I'll go with black and cadmium red in under here well, it's kind of a warm black a little bit here and let that sort of soften out just sort of flick it outwards creating some texture in there okay we are getting there slowly I'm starting to see a little bit of form taking shape I'm going to take a little bit of light blue with some pink and I'm just going to pop a little of that in here just to brighten that in there just a little bit more okay a couple of little dabs here and there because it's a very rough kind of a stone isn't it all right just like that it's a very rough stone so it's going to have little tiny light spots here and there perhaps one or two there and just add a little bit of texture in around here as well I'm just kind of dabbing very loosely it's a very sort of speckled kind of a rock isn't it not sure what kind of rock it is but it's very kind of a speckledy type of a rock pop a little bit 
through here again just to give this side a bit of texture let's move on and do these two sides these two back sides and then we're going to move on to kind of greys and purples and that kind of thing so the first one it's very very bright isn't it it's a very bright kind of a mauve i'm going to try some thalo blue some magenta lots of white very very bright blue in there it's really very white isn't it try a bit of cerulean in there as well uh, maybe even a bit of cobalt i'm just playing around with colors now to see what happens that's all i'm doing okay all right maybe a bit more white I'll take a hint of this pinky color down here just to tone it down slightly now i'll go with that first okay so lots of color lots and lots of color in this scene nice to try something like this i know it's only a few rocks a formation of rocks but it's nice to paint it's nice to try for a change isn't it take a hint of brown just to soften it slightly and i'll go in here and then with this one And I cut in front of that black, like this, and come out down like that, just to get the general shape of it. That's all. Okay. So there we go. Then I'm going to start adding texture to these. So I'm going to mix a deeper color, a deeper purple. Okay. Crimson thalo blue. And a hint of black, tiny, tiny hint of black. Very plummy kind of a colour, maybe a bit more black. Okay, it's a dark plum. I'm just going to kind of soften some of that up, just flicking the brush around. Creating some, some shadow here and there. And you could probably just use a fan brush as well and dab to create that kind of speckled look. And I still might. But for now, I just want to kind of concentrate on getting just that kind of rough feeling, that's all. And I go over here. They always tend to get kind of darker and dirtier towards the end rocks, don't they? A bit there create a little bit of shadow up here darken that a little bit bring that down okay and then sit back and take a look right i'm going to do this dark section in here i'm going to go for a very dark purple phthalo blue crimson and black okay it's almost black but not quite the very very dark dark purple blacky kind of a purple isn't it take a bit more red in that tiny tiny bit all right then I'm going to start using that colour, which is a nice colour, to get some of the shading on the tops. Just up underneath there, you see where it kind of get, just gets kind of dark up around underneath there. That just helps. I think it helps. Create a nice shadow up there. I'm barely touching the canvas now with my brush, okay? I'm just letting it just kind of dance, dance on the canvas. Pop a little bit in along the bottom, create some texture, some shadow down towards the bottom especially. And I'm going to, I'm looking forward to using my palette knife as well for this because it's going to be 
lovely texture with the palette knife I would say now I'm also going to while I have purple here I might as well take some crimson and blue make a nice deep purple and go in here and create some shadow with that purple as well and that then you see it just some kind of ties the painting together okay because kind of transferring your colors throughout the painting helps with the composition it helps just tie everything together you see the way that cool shadow in there now it just sort of almost brings it to life doesn't it maybe a bit there and piece just at the end here i'm not going to go absolutely mad with all of this but i think those little touches of purple really bring it to life don't they now we could also do the same up around the top even though we don't have purples up there i could say okay maybe we do maybe we'll put a little purple just in the shadows that will also bring those to life a little okay now does one part I really want to kind of improve that glow under here and a bit of a glow in the middle as well there's some lovely glows going on isn't there um, so let me clean my brush and I'm going to go with cadmium yellow burnt cyanide those two colors make a wonderful glow especially for something lit by sun and that kind of thing they make a beautiful color a little bit of crimson so I'm going for a very rich orange here now okay let's just try this okay maybe a little bit redder a little bit of cadmium red cadmium yellow it's nice to see something kind of coming together like this is and kind of taking shape and coming to life it's lovely and that's what I love about painting things like this unique little paintings you can see everything coming to life it's fantastic and it's easy it really is just try a lot more of a nice ready rich ready color in under here i want to pop a little bit of that in here give that little glow and i'm going to pop some in around here as well And you can see how that just really adds some nice life to the painting, doesn't it? A bit of red around here. Okay, just sort of dabbing it around. So a lovely orange glow coming from underneath. Now, I want to pop some of that down as well, um, kind of maybe on just the tops of these and I will be adding some yellow to these as well because you can see there's a lovely yellow glow on the fronts of those so not to worry I will I just want to add a little bit of a more of a glow down in here okay I'm going to go slightly lighter again I'm going to take some Naples yellow cadmium yellow and a little cadmium red I want to just pop a slightly lighter color in there so there we are now small brush let's go let's have a bit of fun small pointy brush um have i got one i should have a nice little pointy brush here somewhere i'll try this one here time to add some detail to all of this I'm gonna get some bright yellows bright orangey orangey yellows okay and be careful with these now because you don't want any green mixing in so mixing it with the other colors be very very careful mixing a nice rich orange there look okay and i'm going to just go up here and start with that one 
There, now that's a little bit better now, isn't it? So that's kind of brought it to life now, hasn't it? Nice, rich, sunny colour. Go the same on this one. Then I'm going to darken. I'm going to add crimson, a little yellow, to this one over here. That's slightly kind of darker, isn't it? A little bit on that. Then I'm going to take some burnt umber with crimson, just a little, and I'm going to kind of soften little touches of that in here and there. Perhaps a little bit here. I could use a knife for this now, but I think the palette knife might be a little bit too big. I just want to get a little bit of a dark texture on this. Okay. And I'm then going to lighten it again. We're going to go lighter. Cadmium yellow, little white, little of that orange, okay? I want to get some real, real sunlit colours on that. And the same, just kind of around maybe the edges of some of this. Then some white with the yellow. That'll really give a nice glow, won't it? Okay. That, my friends, is that bad. I am going to widen slightly just there. Then I'm going to start getting some darks. I want to create some nice dark details. Some black, some crimson. And I want to start creating some nice darks, okay? So, nice dark in here. So I want to separate these two rocks here, you see. So I'm just going to create just sort of some texture on the rock. In between. Just to give them a little bit more separation. Do you understand? Do one or two just along there. Maybe could even do one or two along this one here as well and create some along the bottom. Then I'm going to go in here, add some darks inside. So you can kind of see now how that little bit of detail really makes a difference, doesn't it? Um, okay, let me take a look. I want to tone down some of the yellow. I think it's a little bit on the bright side. Just a little. So I'll just take a little bit of ready brown colour. Maybe just tone it down slightly. There, that's better. Then, up here and get some nice blacky colours in again. Crimson and black. Plenty of turpentine. And I'm going to really define some of these dark spots up here. All right. Um, this one comes down. And there's some nice rich darks there.
west into west. Lots of wet color. And I'm also going to take some dark color in around the back of this stone. You can see there's a nice shadow in there. And a nice dark down underneath here. Just a case of popping in some darks, that's all it is. Give that a little bit of shadow down there. So, you know, the details are really fun to do because it's the details really kind of bring it to life. Now, sometimes you don't need a lot of details. Sometimes just a few little brush strokes is more than enough. Um, you know, it depends on what you're comfortable with, I suppose. If you're comfortable with a lot of detail, then you can work away and put as much detail in as you like. Uh, but if you're not comfortable, just a few suggestions here and there is more than enough. Okay? Now, I'm leaving all that top area because I want to use my palette knife on that in just a moment. Just want to create some kind of crevices here with that dark rock around the front, okay? That's all. Right. I just need to do one more thing. I want to transfer some of this orange colour onto the back of this, just here and there. Just to help it sort of go together a little bit better. And we have a lovely rich bright colour as well. In under here, don't we? Where there's a little bit of light. So as you can see, in underneath. Okay, on to, I think the palette knife, I'm not too sure, let's try a palette knife. I'm going to get some uh, light blue, light purple for the top of those rocks, you see that colour up there, beautiful colour. Some phthalo blue, some white and a little magenta, don't want to go too pinky with this. Perhaps a tiny amount of black. The black will just kind of take that edge off, just soften it slightly. But there is lots of white in this. Now, let's go and have a look. Let's pop a couple of bright colours in up there. Maybe more white, actually. And go along the top of here you see i'm just kind of creating that rock up on top it's very very simply done just let the knife take off the paint or let the canvas rather take off the paint see i'll take a touch more blue And I put a little touch of it along the back end here. And a nice big one up on top there. And I'm even going to soften some of it with my knife, you see, through the rock. So we're then creating that lovely rocky texture up on top, you see. Just using little amounts, little amounts. I suppose most of the tutorial really will be on the rock. The grass and everything else like that will be straightforward. That's kind of easy enough. Um, it's just... Now let's get some texture on this, even some white. 
It's very, very bright, isn't it? So let's just pop a little white onto our rocks here and there. Just let it drag down. Turning out nice now so far, isn't it? I'm happy with it. I think it looks lovely and colourful. Even though it's such a small study, it's amazing how much time you can spend on something like this. Even something just small. Pop a little touch of white through here and there as well. Again, to kind of just help with the composition, that's all. Okay. Then I'm going to take a nice warm colour. You can see a lovely warm orangey brown colour up there. Go with some cadmium red, cadmium yellow. It's a very warm colour and a hint of cyanide. It'll give us a nice warm brown, okay? Nice rich, rich, rich brown. And I'm going to just simply pop some of that here and there. Just soften it, kind of soften it through. Here and there. We have a nice piece of it kind of here as well. And a little dab of it up there. And it almost kind of softens into that bluey colour as well, that whitey colour up on top. It softens into that as well a little bit, doesn't it? Very kind of rocky. don't want to overdo this. I think that's fine. Nice texture. Let's move on to our grass. We can come back and finish all of this again, okay, later on. Let's just move on now and get our grass done. Uh, 45 minutes. Wasn't bad, was it? Wasn't bad. So I'm going to need fresh thinners. And I'm going to mix a nice rich green for this. But it's not very, very rich. There's a bit of a coolness to the green in this painting. So some phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, and maybe a little Naples yellow. Uh, let's just have a look at that now. I don't want to go too vibrant either. Maybe a hint of black. So it's a soft, soft, soft kind of a green, isn't it? Let's go up there now. I'm not going to put that tree in. I don't think there's any need to put that little tree in, in the distance. Let's fill this in all the way. Now I'm going to go to, as well, a more olive green, okay? So some black and cadmium yellow. That'll give you a nice warm, warm kind of an olive green. And it doesn't matter if the colours are blending from the rock, it's completely fine. This is really just an undercoat type of a colour, okay? I'll then use my fan brush or something to add lots of lights and darks into this. The focus really is the rock, okay? That's primarily what we're focusing on in this tutorial. And you could use this technique for painting any, any kind of rocks, all right? Now, Let's give it more of a cooler colour. By the way, Tom, if you're watching Tom, Tom asked me to um, paint a kind of a lighthouse with a big wave splashing against it. I'm going to do that next week, Tom, I promise, okay? Um, I just have so much stuff to get through. But I promise next week we're painting a lighthouse with lots of waves, giant waves splashing up against the lighthouse, almost consuming the lighthouse. So that's going to be fun. I can't wait to do that. Right up my street, that kind of a painting. So that'll be fun. Now, let's get this nice and dark. Let's take some black. I need cadmium yellow on my palette. 
and we'll see if we can bring a bit of life into this now with some nice bursts of sunlight coming across the grass as well okay we'll, we'll try it we'll try it and see if we can get that effect and you can see there's lots of little flowers lovely flowers and that kind of thing so we'll pop a few of those in as well so nice and dark down here I'll make it nice and dark towards the bottom, maybe darker than what it is on the photograph because I just want to get that nice contrast for the sunlight, you see. So I want to create some nice sunlight in this. I'm going burnt umber and black then just at the bottom here, okay. Really dark. And I'm also going to use that colour to go up around the back here as well. And a little bit at the side. Soften that through. Let's go a bit darker again. Maybe take some phthalo blue. And go nice and dark in at the back here. There, that's better now, isn't it? And perhaps a little of that and there, soften it out, just a bit of texture, that's all. Okay, we're ready now, I think, for our fan brush. Get some lovely colour done with the fan brush. Um, I need a nice fan brush, okay, people? I need a nice kind of a new fan brush. Now, I have one here, but it's slightly out of shape. Whichever way it's just been sitting. Um, it's slightly out of shape and I have another one here. I could get away with this one. I'll just give it a good clean, okay? One of my very bad habits is that I don't clean brushes properly. I tend to kind of rush because I'm so busy sometimes. I tend to sort of rush and I shouldn't. I know it's very, I'm very bold. I know I shouldn't be doing that. Let's get some dark. Let's get some dark colour. Let's get some black. Lots of cadmium yellow, some sailor blue, and plenty of turpentine, okay? Let's just see if we can get a nice effect now with this. Up there, let's get some nice dark texture, a bit more yellow, I think. Um, a little bit of darkness coming across here. Let that kind of swoop down. You see the way the hill falls. Let that swoop down like that. Now I will be putting lots of brights in here, so don't, I'm not being too particular with all of this. Just want to get all this lovely sort of texture done with the fan brush. You see, just like that. Lovely texture. You can even flick as well, if you want. Give a little impression of some grasses, that kind of thing, you see. Let's just go for it, let's just go to town, let's go mad, let's go crazy. Crazy with the fan brush. Isn't that right? A lovely bright strip going across the middle, so I leave that. Flick, 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 flick. I've only a little bit of paint on my brush now, okay? I'm just creating this lovely texture, that's all I want to do. And you can see already we have this wonderful texture. A little bit of grass perhaps up around the top there. Little bit up there. Okay. Then we're going to our very bright colours. Very, very, very bright colours. I'm going to get some cadmium yellow because we're going to need a lot of this. A lot of cadmium yellow. And I think the colour I'm going to use is. Cadmium yellow with a hint of burnt sienna. I think I'll try that first. Let me get loads of colour here now. And lots of turpentine. Because a thinner paint will stick better to a thicker paint, okay? I know with oils it's thick over lean. But when painting grasses and stuff like this, if I go on with lots of thick paint, it's just going to become very muddy. So a good bit of thinner, as you see, right on the tip of your brush. And that really makes a difference. It really does, I promise. Just try it. 
and a little touch of white. Now I'm going really, really yellow with this. Lots and lots of yellow. Now let's try it, okay? Load the tip of your brush. And look, let's just soften this into the, the, the darks. You see, it's going in between. Softening them together, creating kind of lights and darks in the grass, you see? I'm going to get the idea. Let's go up here and create some nice light in front of this. I'm just dabbing very, very gently. That's all I'm doing. This is not the last stage. I will be going brighter than this again, okay, with some white and yellow. But this, I just kind of want to get the feeling of the land kind of falling down here, you see. So I'm going to dab this through down into this as well, you see. Very gently, softening it kind of together a little bit, just to create the direction of this mound kind of falling in one place. And the same over here, look, Got a little touch of it over there as well. Now I'll clean my brush and I only want a little, <clears throat> I want to soften it through here, just a little. So you can see now it's kind of coming to life slowly, isn't it? Um, next I'm going to go with some really bright colour. So clean the brush, just very quickly. Get some yellow and white. Now you're really going to see this kind of spring to life. It's really going to jump out. Let's try this. Right across there. And there's a lovely light spot going right across, isn't there? Just let that soften in. So now, it's really kind of coming together, isn't it? I will add some very sunlit colour to this as well, okay? But for now, I just want to go with this bright colour, just for now. Let that kind of dissipate in. I don't want to make it so solid, do you know what I mean? Okay, that will do. I'm then going to go with a cool green. Some white, some phthalo blue and a little yellow. So I'm going to add a cool green as well over here and that will just help with the shadowed side of the grass, okay? It'll just kind of make it pop a little bit, make it jump. I don't want it too kind of dark and gloomy and greeny. I want to add a little touch of light into the darker side as well. Just like that, you see? Just a little here and there. And that's all right. That'll do fine. What will we do next? We'll add some warmth into this. I want to get some more yellow. I'm going to put a nice glow into this grass, a really nice sunny, sunny kind of a glow. And I suppose we could just use cadmium yellow and a little cadmium red. A nice warm, warm, sunny, sunny glow. Okay? Isn't that better? A nice bright sunny sunny day. There we go. Right, we have some rocks, don't we? I want to get some rocks in. I could use a brush, but I think there's so much paint on this now that the brush won't cover properly. So I'm going to try a palette knife. I'll try a knife for a change. Crimson, a bit of blue, a bit of black. And get a nice pinky kind of a rock in. You see? Just like that. Another one beside it. And the suggestion of one or two kind of hiding amongst the grass up there. Okay. Now, oh, let's try that again. Let's go over here. We have a nice little pointy one. 
there, don't we? And we've suggestion of one or two as well in the grass, just at the base of this. And it's genuinely, it's really just an impression, okay? That's all I'm going for, a little impression of some rock. A rocky kind of an area, let's just call it a rocky area. I'll go with some light blue on some of those. And I'm going to add some dark to some of those then as well. A little black. And I'll just pop a little touch of black through some of those. And a little touch of black on some of those. So you can see how easy you can just make this type of a scene, okay? Just, it's an impression of some rocks, that's all. You don't have to go crazy with everything. Then I'm going to sit those down, okay? They need to be sat down slightly. Let's take some yellow and just pop it in underneath, okay? Just like that. The next job is a few flowers, isn't it? I can see lots and lots of lovely flowers. There's even a few little bright grasses popping up here and there. And I should realistically leave this dry because my brush is not very pointy. But I could stick one or two in anyway. And I'm going to stick some flowers, some little daisies and things like that. Okay, let's just pop couple of little white dabs in here and there. Your mind will fill in all of the blanks, okay? I keep saying that, but they will. Your mind will tell you it's little flowers or it's this or it's that. All you're doing is feeding the imagination. That's all. And you can put white, you can put blue, you can put any colour you like. It's entirely up to you. And we could have little clumps of them as well. If you don't like doing this with the brush, you could just use the tip of your knife, palette knife, and we'll do the trick as well. couple of thicker ones towards the bottom just to give the painting a little more perspective let's try some bright blue ones here's some thalo blue let's pop some blue ones in here and there and I think even a couple of red Tiny, tiny red ones. I think the red will just make the painting pop, won't it? It'll just kind of bring your eye across the painting. Little touches of red here and there just help. And that's it, my friend. My friends, pardon me. Um, that is it. I think we're done. I'm going to pop a little bird in up on the sky. Small, small, small little bird, okay? I think it just needs something. Um, maybe I could pop a little tree in or something like that, but we'll see. Little bird flying away. Or could be coming towards us, doesn't matter. Um, so I think, my friends, I'll call it finished. I might just add one or two small, small details. Just refine some of those darks in there and again this is the part where it can all go horribly wrong you need to be very careful not to overdo your details because you could put too much in and end up spoiling your painting so do be careful okay be very very careful 
perhaps just one or two on the backs of some of those rocks. Don't really need it, but perhaps another one or two just down towards the bottom. Here. Um, I think we are finished. Yes, I won't doodle because I don't want to ruin it. My friends, I'm going to call that finished. Um, I actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to take some bright, bright colour and just maybe add a touch of really bright colour to some of those spots just up there, okay? just to brighten them a bit more, that's all. Okay, and I need to just sharpen this edge a little bit, don't I? There we are. My friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I had huge pleasure in painting this i had so much fun you should try something like this sometime if you have landmarks like this where you live try it just you know it may not look like much in a photograph but i think once it's painted it's fantastic thank you so so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed that let me turn the camera here now let me show my face i suppose i suppose the last thing you want to be seeing is my face Oh, there we go. Okay, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I stick a frame on that. That's going to be a nice frame, I think. I'll see you next week. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please give me a like, a comment if you wish to do so. Um, if you have any questions, please just email me, stephenconway12 at gmail.com. Pop over to Patreon if you'd like to support me. Um, I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm very thankful. And I'll see you next week, everyone. Happy painting and God bless.